Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Anne Liebgott on the line, and she's founder and CEO over at AW Switzerland. Anne, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. I think it's so cool that we have a nine-hour time difference. I'm sitting here in Switzerland. You're sitting over there in the U.S., and it's like we're sitting next to each other. I love it, and uh, excited to have you on the show today because uh, who else would I want to have on the show um, than you to talk about the benefits of Swiss bank accounts and opening them for Americans? And uh, if, I, if, you were, if you weren't calling me from Switzerland, I'd be worried, so I'm excited about this. You are the expert. Um, so, Anne, I want to get into that, uh, but before we do, I do want to go a little bit further into your company, so AW Switzerland and what you do there. So tell us a little bit more about your company, please. Okay, AW Switzerland is an um, online resource. It's an online platform which basically builds a bridge between American clients and Swiss wealth management service providers. For example, the Swiss SEC registered investment advisors that registered with the SEC to be able to provide Swiss wealth management services to U.S. citizens, uh, U.S. residents, and U.S. expats. That's awesome. And um, this is a great transition into our overall topic. So the benefits of Swiss wealth management, so whether it's banking or investment services, um, where do you want to start with that? Well, I'd actually like to start to say like one of the reasons why. And one of the reasons why is if you take a look at the present situation, uh, not just in the U.S., but also around the world, we've had, you know, the corona crisis that's still going on. Uh, we have, uh, you know, tumultuous situations in U.S. cities. It's an election year. Um, the situation in the U.S., for example, is not very clear cut as to what route it's going to take. And there's a lot of volatility. There's a lot of uh, unsureness um, abound. And having a certain amount of funds stowed away, if you want to call it that, or held in Switzerland, that gives an American client, an American investor, a jurisdictional diversification, uh, what we actually like to call the proverbial Swiss nest egg. No, that's uh, it makes a lot of sense. And let can we, let's go a little bit further down that track because I think some people are, are like listening to this right now. They've heard of you know that it's something that they can do to diversify where their assets are held, but they don't they don't they haven't really gone far down that path or done the research yet. So what are like, let's go a little bit further down that path. Okay, that's exactly you're so right. I mean, I get phone calls from uh, Americans uh, basically every day usually in the evening because of the time difference. Mm -hmm. And they're very uh, interested in, like, how do I get established in Switzerland? How do I do it? How can I do it with? I thought uh, Americans were not able to have a bank account in Switzerland, and so on and so forth. And there really is, like you said, a, a, a general maybe idea or knowledge, but there's no detail knowledge there. And that's what this Americans, um, you know, this Americans Welcome is the, is the, is the Earl, AmericansWelcome.Swiss, uh, platform actually does provide. It provides a way to learn about who and how and when I can get established in Switzerland. What types of uh, services are, are, are available? Um, so just in general, so just to give everyone listening a flavor. Okay. Well, the main core of the platform, of course, are the Swiss wealth managers that register with the mm -hmm. SEC. Uh, one can open up an account with them. They have they work together with Swiss custodian banks, and they will uh, help to choose a strategy, an investment strategy, uh, usually internationally diversified, also multi-currency, and they will then um, do hand-holding to get the custodian account established, and then you will either give them a, a advisory or a discretionary mandate to manage the funds within that account. 
What are the um, the types of investors that you found? And I know this is a broad question. I know it's going to vary from investor to investor. So we're not giving everybody listening. We're not giving you investment advice. We're just talking about the idea of the services. Um, what are the what are the types of investors that are, have typically have you found that have been appropriate for um, using Swiss Wealth Management Services? Uh, well, there's two sides to that. Of course, you have, let's say, the globally mobile American that, uh, mm-hmm. you know, lives in various countries, might be an expat, might need to travel around, has international connections, maybe even international business connections and so on. And then uh, they actually have an account in Switzerland basically as a necessity, uh, mm-hmm. you know, not necessarily because of, you know, just really a choice. But then you also have the stay-at-home Americans. And the stay-at-home Americans – they, of course, are, let's say, uh, you know, more affluent. Um, they have this feeling that they would like to have some assets accessible from abroad. Uh, they don't want to keep all of their funds within one banking system. And the Swiss banking system or the, or the Swiss financial center just happens to be the leading, the global leader in private Swiss wealth management. No, it makes total sense. Um, so t- talk a little bit more about the about the necessity of having, um, of, of, or I should say the benefits of actually having that banking system um, or being a part of that banking system when you're traveling abroad or when you're doing other things like that. Because you mentioned it's a necessity for a certain segment of the population. Well, yeah, for example, you have an American expat. An American expat, let's say he comes to Switzerland and lives here for two or three years. Then he goes uh, to um, the Emirates. And maybe after that, he is living in Singapore. And then maybe after that, he's uh, spending some time in the UK. And at the end of the day, he may or may not choose to go back to the U.S. to live. Maybe he'll say, you know, I like my stay in Switzerland. I want to, you know, stay there. And during this whole time, he doesn't want to transfer his assets from one location to the other, to the next, to the next, to the next. Mm -hmm. So he has basically a hub in Switzerland, if you want to call it that, where he can have his funds, he can have his investment management, he has his trusted advisor, uh, you know, they have a long-term relationship and so on. And so they keep their funds in Switzerland despite the fact that they're moving from location to location. Yeah, that's what I figured, and 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 I think there's some benefits to that overall, just based on the way the banking's done in Switzerland. Um, am I off on that, or? No, I mean Switzerland is very attractive uh, to Americans, but also to other people around the world. It has always had this safe haven, um, you know, quality to it, and that has to do with like you know the long term uh, political stability economic stability, Switzerland is a neutral country, you know, we're not involved in any you know, skirmishes and wars and so on. And even just recently with this coronavirus, uh, just the other day, Switzerland was named the most resilient country and the number one country in the world to because of the, of the COVID-19 virus. Mm, I mean, it makes makes perfect sense. Uh, so, Anne, that being said, uh, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Americans Welcome S- Switzerland and about wealth management services available, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, the easiest way for them to do that is to visit the platform under americanswelcome.swiss. There they can go in, they can browse around, they can see the Swiss SEC registered investment advisors, they can read about Swiss custodian banks, they can read about legal compliance issues. They can see U.S. tax advisors, uh, Swiss trustees for the trust business, um, citizenship and residence planning, which uh, these days is also becoming more important that people can have an alternative uh, citizenship than just their own, their only their U.S. one, et cetera, et cetera. So the platform doesn't only uh, provide information on Swiss wealth management services. It goes a bit beyond that. Fantastic. Well, Anne, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about what you're doing over at AW Switzerland, also known as Americans Welcome Switzerland. So awesome work you're doing there to uh, to educate and to really connect investors or potential investors with uh, wealth management services in Switzerland. So awesome stuff there. Um, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, and 
if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Anne, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you for having me.